and the Congress has introduced bills like the National Emergency Centers Act, H.R. 645, which merges local governments and the police under federal control. And as we all know that have watched these things, they're ready for the riots with these detention centers that are being opened up around the country, with state police training for riot control in the, in the event of economic calamity and food riots. They know what's going on and they're prepared for it. So people better also prepare for it themselves. Anyone that's not prepared for what's going to happen, they deserve what they get because there's enough information out there pointing to the problems and they should take all precautionary actions. Next, Obama ordered the Defense Department to issue DOD Directive 1404.10, establishing a one million person civilian army under his control. Simultaneously, Obama launched USAService.org. The new website deceptively masquerades as a federal agency, but in reality is a recruiting tool building a separate, completely private army outside of government that takes orders directly from Obama's controllers. Barack Obama has refused to rescind Presidential Decision Directive 51, signed by George W. Bush. The directive plainly states that the president is a dictator and that Congress is ceremonial. We cannot continue to rely only on our military in order to achieve the national security objectives that we've set. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well-funded. President Obama and his Chief of Staff Rahm Emanuel have repeatedly stated on the record that all Americans below the age of 64 will be forcibly conscripted into federal service. Citizenship is not an entitlement program. It comes with responsibilities. Everybody somewhere between the ages of 18 and 25 will serve three months of basic training and understanding in a kind of civil defense. Now, it doesn't always have to be uh, service in uniform. One of the things that if you talk to our generals, they are desperate for is a civilian uh, counterpart to our military forces. So is this compulsory then? It, well, you have to, uh, in a sense, it's, it's a required of everybody, 18 to 25, three months, uh, and at some point at that point you do it. Obviously, I'm not going to say perfect legislation. We'll work that process through. You can do it during a college right. summer. You right. can do it after Anytime. high school. If you have a demagogue with a fanatical mass movement of personality cultists who is imposing the program of a group of extreme bankers and finance oligarchs, that's fascism. Obama's transition site, change.gov, proclaimed that middle school and high school students will be forced to serve the federal government. Fascism is gutter up, streets up, hooligans, thugs, fervently idealistic students, swarming adolescents, just the kind of thing you see around Obama. The way you get a population to enslave itself when the police and the army are no longer enough to do that. So I think that's, that's uh, if you're a left liberal, uh, it's time to open your eyes to that. All young Americans between the ages of 18 and 24 will be conscripted into a paramilitary domestic security force. If Obama has his way, adults and seniors will also be forced into other forms of service for the betterment of the homeland. Number three, disarming the American people. Obama operatives in the Congress have introduced more than 10 bills that would end the Second Amendment as we know it. H.R. 1022 would allow the new Attorney General Eric Holder the dictatorial power to ban any gun he wishes at will. In 2008, before the Supreme Court, in the D.C. gun ban case, District of Columbia versus Heller, Holder argued for the complete disarmament of the American people and that only the military should own firearms. H.R. 257 would ban all youth shooting sports, including YMCA and Youth Olympic shooting clubs. H.R. 45 would force all gun owners to undergo federal psychological screening, registration and testing to keep their firearms. White House Chief of Staff Rahm Emanuel has proposed the extrajudicial banning of any American on the fraudulent no-fly list from owning any firearm. That is, if you are on the no-fly list, 
because you are known as maybe a possible terrorist, you cannot buy a handgun in America. Over 25,000 Americans are added each month to the no-fly list, which numbers over a million people who have not been charged or convicted of any crime. It's a case of mistaken identity for a five-year-old boy from Normandy Park. He had trouble boarding a plane because someone with his same name is wanted by the federal government. King 5's Mimi Jung is live at SeaTac Airport to explain. Mimi. Lori, it's hard to believe that a five-year-old could be considered a threat, but that's exactly what happened here at SeaTac last week when Matthew Gardner showed up for a flight to LAX. And they fly in as five-year-olds go, Matthew Gardner is about as harmless as you can get. But when he and his mom checked in for their flight at SeaTac last week, Matthew was considered the criminal. If you're on that no-fly list, your access to the right to bear arms is canceled because you're not part of the American family. You don't deserve that right. There is no right for you if you're on that terrorist list. And even though this Matthew Gardner is only in kindergarten, TSA workers still conducted a full-blown search. They searched all of our belongings. They took everything apart piece by piece. Um, Nadia Counter says it wasn't easy being treated as a possible threat to national security. I picked up my child to give him a hug and tell him, you know, it's okay, we're doing fine. And they reported to me that I was not allowed to touch him. He was a security risk, and um, they had to re-search me to make sure that I had not um, obtained any materials from him. Number four, massive restrictions on the First Amendment guarantee of free speech. The President, Congress, and the FCC have announced plans to not only curtail speech on talk radio and newspapers, but to also regulate speech on the Internet through the Orwellian named Fairness Doctrine. The Obama machine is also pressuring Congress to pass draconian hate speech laws that will eviscerate the First Amendment. Number five, they plan to further federalize health care so that the government can dictate what kind of care citizens receive. Modeled after the British system, this includes rationing care and restricting what procedures the handicapped and elderly are eligible for. Number six, Obama is already pushing to expand the Department of Defense budget and to station more U.S. troops overseas to encircle Russia, China, Iran, as well as setting up bases in Africa under the pretext of humanitarian aid and dominate and occupy Africa through AFRICOM. So we're taking your phone call, seeing what you think of Barack H. Obama. Is he a Judas goat? Is he a front man? Is he a betrayer? Let's go to Anthony in Georgia. Anthony, what's your take on Barack Obama? Uh, they put the face of Barack Obama as uh, part of their their public relations because it's like in the old folk tales about vampires. A vampire cannot force his way into somebody's house. It gets, it's against some kind of metaphysical law. So the vampire has to persuade the resident of the household to open the door and invite him in. So they're going to look at the people at Barack Obama, which looks like them and appears to be on their side. They're going to say, okay, here's my ally. Let me open the door and let me let uh, this person in. And then Barack Obama is just, of course, a front man for the American empire where he's going to have the entire U.S. Navy, the entire U.S. Army, and the entire U.S. Marines under AFRICOM command. And, of course, he's going to turn it into a new Iraq and he's going to turn it into a new Afghanistan. Everything, every operation that you see going on in Iraq and Afghanistan is going to propagate to the uh, poor countries of Africa. And well, sir, sir, I agree with you. Sir, I agree with you. They're looking to the people. They see a handsome, smiling African face. You know, he's all, hey, I'm from Kenya. And then it's a total bait and switch. But it's the same thing here in the United States where they would get sell out uh, Native American chiefs to sell out their people. This is the right. oldest trick in the book. And he can also pacify uh, uh, the most downtrodden minority groups in the United States. And he's saying, hey, get ready for sacrifice. Get ready to lose your standard of living. They're like, yay, I love Obama. They could never get away with this with a John McCain. Obama basically does uh, a couple of things. One is, again, this idea, kick the Chinese out of Africa. Kick them out of Sudan where they get oil. Kick them out of Zimbabwe where they get raw materials. Start a civil war in Congo, another big source of raw materials. Al-Qaeda, an arm of uh, the U.S. intelligence community, is now active in Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco. 